Today we're going to make a concrete coffee table and stain it black. The sides of the table are going to be made out of plate steel that is 3 16th of an inch thick. I'm going to cut the steel with my angle grinder. After drawing a line, I started with just a light pass where I score the steel before cutting all the way through. I used the first piece to measure the second piece and then cut that as well. I then cut two pieces of two inch steel angles. After marking the lines with a silver sharpie, I then cut them with the angle grinder. I wanted to make sure that both pieces were exactly the same length, so I clamped them together and ground the ends flush. I used a scrap piece of steel angle, a spring clamp, and some magnet clamps to hold the ends upright so that I could weld in the angle sections. I started with the inside welds that will eventually be covered in concrete. I flipped the base right side up and then welded the outside seams. Now this side will show, so I made sure to grind it all the way out. I added in four pieces of steel flat bar and drilled holes in them so that I could screw in a plywood bottom. I cut the bottom out of a scrap piece of three quarter inch thick plywood. I used an orbital sander to round over the corners just a little bit so that it would fit inside the steel. I'm going to reinforce the concrete with some steel mesh. I just cut that with wire cutters and I cut it just a little bit smaller than the plywood. I don't want the plywood to absorb and suck water away from the wet concrete, so I coated it with two coats of Minwax Polycrylic. I flipped the base over and screwed in the plywood and then I added some additional screws that would just hold the steel mesh about a half an inch above the surface of the wood. I used some silicone caulking to seal around the edges between the plywood and the metal. Duct tape would also work. It's important to get the table level before pouring in the concrete, so I just used some scrap pieces of material to level it out. I mixed and poured the Quickcrete 5000 concrete mix in a mixing tray using a small hand hoe. I find that a hoe is easier to mix concrete with than a shovel because you can just keep pulling it rather than having to lift up a pile of it and then flip it. I shoveled the wet concrete into the mold and then pushed it down through the reinforcing mesh and into all the corners and edges. A scrap piece of 2x4 came in handy to use as a screed to level the top. Now all I'm trying to do is get the top level. I'm gonna go for a rough finish on this concrete. Now I've done the same technique and done a smooth finish by troweling it over and over and over again. If you wanna see that video, I'll put a link to it in the description box below. And while the concrete is curing, let me tell you a little bit about the sponsor for this week's video, Filter By. Most of us don't change the air filters in our home often enough. Dirty and clogged air filters can lead to bad indoor air quality, some unpleasant smells, and they can reduce the performance of your heating and cooling system. Filterby.com has a massive selection of high quality American made air filters. They provide free shipping and they have a subscription plan so you don't have to remember. They'll just keep sending you a fresh clean air filter whenever you need one. My parents have allergies so I set them up with a subscription plan where they will get a nice fresh clean air filter every three months. It had been about a year since they replaced the last one and it was pretty gross, so this subscription plan should definitely result in better indoor air quality. If you're not into subscription plans, they also have the option for a one-time purchase with great prices. Click on the link in the description box below to find out more about Filter Buy. Alright, back to the build. I was going for a textured, rough industrial finish for this table. So I used my angle grinder with a flap disc, not only to grind the concrete flush to the steel, but also to kind of rough up and gouge out little bits of the concrete to give it this kind of worn plaster texture. The flap disc was also handy for cleaning off the extra concrete that had seeped over the sides and got stuck to the steel. Now this table is perfectly usable as it is and would just need a coat of paste wax to seal it. 
but I'm really interested in trying to stain the concrete and I want to try to do that with some India ink. I mix some black India ink with some water at about a one to one ratio and then spread it thickly over the concrete with a foam brush. After letting it sit and soak into the concrete for about five minutes, I then poured some clean water over the top and worked the ink into the concrete a little bit more with a rag. Now what I'm doing here is removing the excess ink and using the additional layer of water to help the ink that's on the surface penetrate a little bit deeper. Once the ink had dried, I sealed both the concrete and the steel with Varathane paste wax. I used a rag to apply a real thick coat, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then rubbed out the excess. Now because of the texture, some of the wax kind of sits in the low spots of the concrete, so I used a propane torch just to melt that out. If you don't have a torch, a hairdryer on the hot setting or a heat gun will also work. The result is a surface with a three-dimensional texture that's still smooth to the touch and nice and clean. I really like how the concrete matches the color and texture of the raw steel. And because we use paste wax, the surface isn't glossy, which means that food photographs on this dark surface really well. If you want to learn more about the concrete products that I use, go to quickcrete.com. Check out some of our other videos and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks.